Hi, my name is Aya. You're watching Aya Reads and I'm here to introduce my 24 hour reading vlog of reading as many unhinged Halloween novellas as I can. So as I'm as of filming this, I already did the 24 hours, but I'm going to tell you about the TBR I had prior to me actually starting reading the book. So things will change, but you'll see that in the vlog for now, or at least when I started the vlog. I had eight books on my TBR, so I'm gonna run through them. I'm not gonna give you the synopsis. I will link all of them in the description. So if you wanna know more about a particular book, especially a book that I didn't read in this vlog, then all the links are down below. The first one is Riding the Headless Horseman by Molly Likovich. The second one is Jack by Leila Fay. The third one is Hours for Halloween by Violet Taylor. The third one is Scream for the Scarecrow by Violet Taylor again. The fifth one is Seduced by the Pumpkin King by Melanie Nix. The sixth one is Offerings by Ashley Mack. The seventh one is Burn for Jack by Aidan Pierce. And the eighth one is Moonflower by Elira Firethorn. Yeah, the vlog is basically gonna be a 24 hour reading vlog and I'm gonna read as many of these as I can. So let's cue to the vlog. Okay, so right now it is like 8.41, so I wanna start my 24 hours at nine o'clock. So I figured let's choose my read now because all of them I don't own yet, but all of them I'm planning on reading on Kindle. So I have to buy them and you know, I just wanna know what I'm gonna be reading in like about 20 minutes time. So let's do a screen recording and let's pick a book together. I'm gonna do just a spinner wheel because all of them are novellas. Yes, some are a little bit longer than others, but I'm interested in all of them. So, and I don't really wanna pick myself. So let's do a screen recording and let's let the spinner wheel decide. So yeah, they're all here as you can see and I did them in Halloween colors, so purple and orange. So let's spin. All right, starting off with a good one, Seduced by the Pumpkin King. Let me look that one up. Oh yeah, that one was the craziest looking one. Well, one of the craziest looking one, but it's also one of the shortest one. It's only 49 pages. So let's see. All Caddy wanted was directions back to the highway. When she got, what she got was a bloodthirsty mop chasing her into the arms of a fierce beast straight out of a nightmare. Oros is the king of nightmare creatures, ruling over them with a savagery that cannot be questioned, but he yearns for a mate. That special woman who will accept him for what he is. Caddy is like nobody he's ever known. Her fiery personality challenges him, her scent arouses him. When the two finally confront each other, will they be able to resist the passion they feel? Can a human truly love a beast born out of nightmares? So the average rating is 3.59, so not very high. And not a lot of people have read it actually, only 86 ratings. I guess that's gonna be the one I'm gonna start with. And also like this, I guess this is a 24 hour reading vlog. I'm not gonna be reading the whole time. I also wanna watch some YouTube videos and edit a couple videos, but I am gonna try my hardest to read as many of these as I can. So I'm gonna start at nine sharp. And I guess I'll update you. Since it's only 49 pages for this one, I'm gonna just update you once I finish. Yeah, I hope I like it. I know for sure I'm gonna get unhinged behavior, but that's okay, that's what I signed up for. Okay, so it's a good thing I started earlier because I cannot find this book anywhere. I even tried looking for her other book, Groped by the Grinch. What am I doing? <laughs> and I also couldn't find that one. I don't know, okay, for some reason, I cannot find it on Amazon. So what I'm gonna do instead, because while I was searching for it, I realized that I forgot one crucial book and it's Seduced by the Pumpkin Spice Latte. <laughs> so we're just gonna remove Seduced by the Pump. Okay, so let me do a screen recording again. So what we're gonna do is, <laughs> I love how serious I'm talking about this. We're gonna remove Seduced by the Pumpkin King and we're gonna uh, change that for Seduced Let's just do pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice latte. Okay. And let's spin again. Okay. Spin. Yeah. Okay. Let's spin again. Okay. Good. Hopefully I can find this one. <laughs> Scream for the scarecrow. Uh, let, let me actually look it up while you're here. 
Okay, um, scream for the scarecrow. Yeah, okay, yay, I found it. Okay, this is also similar length. It's only 39 pages. And let me read it to you, okay. So this is a dark romance monster smut short story. Scarlet has no idea that her encounter with a harmless scarecrow will soon change her life forever. When she ends up in the same pumpkin patch on the night of All Hallows Eve, something has changed. A monster now roams the rows of pumpkins and gourds, and he hungers for more than just her blood. If you like your man monstrous and morally gray, look no further. But he's no knight in shining armor, okay? So, yeah. Okay, graphic violence, dubcon, blood. We'll see. We'll see. Um, it is kind of expensive for the amount of pages I'm getting, but I'm gonna buy it. And hopefully this is gonna be unhinged, unhinged behavior. I am sad about the pumpkin kitten one. Uh, let, let me know if I can get that on any other website. I looked for it, but I could not find it. So uh, there's still 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna do something else. And then once the clock strikes nine, I'm gonna be reading Scream for the Scarecrow. And since this is only 45 pages, I will just update you once I finish. Okay. So it's nine o'clock and I'm starting and it starts with like a poem and I love it when books do that. So I'm just going to read it to you. Okay. No lingering, no time to waste. The sun dips low. You must make haste. Among the pumpkins in the vines, look closely or you'll miss the signs. He watches all throughout the day, a painted face that's stuffed with hay. But underneath his tattered clothes, a darker story must be told. A wicked man and wicked deeds. The witch's curse, for now he heeds. And hide your daughters, pure and chaste. He hungers for them, craves their taste. So heed this tale or pay the toll before the scarecrow steals your soul. Okay. Also, I just realized this only has like 38 pages or 37 pages. So that's even less than what I thought. So I'm going to read and see you soon. Okay. I have to interject. So I'm on chapter two. And this bitch is, has the worst friends and it's also dumb. So she realizes that she accidentally left her purse in the pumpkin patch. And what does she decide to do? Go there in the dark on Halloween alone to like a deserted field, which somebody already told her is haunted or cursed, I think uh, is what the man said. She decides to go there alone at night. Are you stupid? And then her roommate is like, okay, good luck. What the fuck? Like, don't you think you should go with her? But then of course we would not have a story, but still. This is like stupid horror movie character behavior. Anyway. Okay, so it is 9.45 and I finished a scream for the scarecrow and i'm gonna give it four stars i do have to say this is not a romance <laughs> it's uh it, really it is it's a horror so it's like an erotic horror basically <laughs> but i don't know i liked it i thought the writing was very good so i'm interested to read more by violet taylor in fact one of the books on the this tbr is also by her and the end of the book recommended feast for the vampire king which is also a novella, so I also put that on my TBR. So if by the end of this reading vlog I still have some time, maybe I'll pick that one up. But I enjoyed it. Like this basically, this dumb girl who thinks it's a good idea to go back to a cursed farm, uh, like pumpkin farm, gets taken by the scarecrow, like very much dubious, dubious consent. But then she enjoys it and then she starts, it's gonna be definitely consensual. Um, basically only like the first two chapters are not sex and then the rest of the book is all sex. <laughs> so very much erotic. Um, and like I said, I liked it. It was entertaining. You like, I read it in less than an hour and definitely got me into the Halloween mood because the first part of when he, like the way she describes the scarecrow, he is very scary. And like throughout the book, like there's a sinister undertone and even the ending is kind of freaky and scary. So four stars, I would recommend it. It's definitely unhinged though. So let's spin for another book. So I removed obviously Scream for the Scarecrow and we're gonna spin again. So spin. Okay, so this is one of the longer ones, Moonflower. 
So right now, like I said, it's 9.45. I don't want to stay up too long. And like I said, I also want to do other things tonight. Yeah, so this is 181 pages. So like I said, I don't know if I'm going to finish it tonight, but this is an MFM, which... <laughs> Yes, I've been in the mood for like a poly book. So since this is a little bit longer, I'm going to just give you the synopsis for it when I'm halfway through. Let me find it. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, found it. This is around the same price as the other one. She recently changed the cover and I think the new cover is better. So yeah, I'm going to start with this one. We'll see how far I get through it tonight. And if not, I'll definitely finish it tomorrow. But like I already said, I will update you halfway through. And this is doing wonders for my Goodreads goal because I was four bo books behind. So now I'm not anymore. Okay, so it's the next day and right now it is 9.50. So almost 10 o'clock. And I've been up uh, since like 7.38. I have read a little bit, but mostly I've just been <laughs> chilling and procrastinating going to the supermarket because I need to get some breakfast. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. I technically have some bread, but I really want yogurt. So I'm gonna, after filming this update, I'm gonna go to the supermarket, but I do have an update for Moonflower. Okay, so actually let me, so today is Monday and I have the day off. So yeah, the plan is just to read, read all day and I have to clean a little bit. Well, I mainly do uh, like my washing and the dishes, stuff like that. And I have to cook, but I don't know what I wanna cook. <laughs> Because I'm kind of tired of ordering shit. So I don't know. I have to figure that out. Maybe I'll go to the do groceries twice. Right now I really just want to get breakfast. So. so I'm on chapter 9 of Moonflower. Which is page 107. So I'm a little bit over halfway through. I'm on uh, like 54% of the book. So basically this story is an MFM. So it's one girl, two guys. But the guys don't do anything together. So they mainly, it's just her, them fucking the girl and not fucking each other, that would be MMF. So you follow Cora, Ezra and Wilder, and they have been best friends ever since they were little kids. So they used to do everything together. But then when they got to college, Cora moved to a different state and slowly but surely she, con she started contacting them less and less. They don't really know why, but she has been in love with them for a very long time and she wants them both and she thinks she's selfish for that. It's okay to love them both, you know. If I can find that clip, I'll leave it here. It's okay to love them both. I did. So Vampire Diaries is one of my favorite TV shows. So I mean, Catherine, but those were brothers. So I don't know if, anyway, moving on. But little does she know, they have been in love with her. And Wilder ends up reading one of her blog posts where she confesses all her secrets. And then he talks to Ezra because they are best friends. They live together and talks about his, talks to him about maybe sharing her. And they both agree. So then they decide to surprise her on Halloween and, you know, scare her and fuck her, basically. And that is basically going to be the plot for this book, is them trying all sorts of kinky stuff together. Yeah, so far I'm liking it. I think this is like a solid, smutty Halloween good time. The only thing, so far it feels a little bit imbalanced. I feel like I know Wilder and Cora, but I don't really know Ezra. So right now there is a scene talking about them talking about his depression, stuff like that. But I don't really feel like I know him as well as the other two. So hopefully that will be balanced out. That is one problem I have with like polyamorous couples. It has to be balanced. Like first of all, I have to believe in not one love story. I have to believe in three love story. Well, no, in this case, I have to believe in two love stories. Also, I need to know every single one of these characters. So, so far, it's not that I don't know him. I feel like I just know the other two. A little bit better but like I said so far I'm enjoying it it's a good fun smutty good time and I feel like I'm reading it pretty fast and let's see what my kindle says so I have about one hour and seven minutes left but like I said I'm gonna do some I'm gonna get some breakfast watch some YouTube videos too put my washing in the washing ma machine and I guess I'll just give you my update once I finish okay so I just got back it was raining which of course <laughs> it would be I didn't think it, w it didn't look like it was raining when I left but I did decide since it was raining and I really, I just want to veg out on the couch today. I didn't want to go out for groceries at least another time. So I decided to do groceries. Oh, sorry. Professional right here. 
to do the groceries for dinner as well even though i'm still undecided of what i want to make uh, i did get ingredients for lasagna but if i don't feel like cooking that long or if i cook a little bit later then it's just going to turn into a pasta so that's good i have options and what else my hand is hurting me okay let's do this what else um yeah so i'm gonna do a little grocery haul i did want to say something else anyway we'll see maybe if i feel like if it's gonna be a little bit better weather maybe i'll do like a walk to kind of clear my head there's a lot going on at the moment but we'll see i'll keep you updated but let's do the grocery haul so let's flip you around and show you my haul all right so this is what i got so these were the yogurts i wanted and they were actually on sale so lucky me even though it was raining i did get uh, my breakfast for sale so i'm gonna eat one tomorrow one and then i have two left for the week i got some onions because i don't have any uh some lasagna sheets salt because i was out or something like that um some zucchini a bell pepper some bechamel which uh, yeah no i'm not, if i'm cooking for myself i'm for sure not gonna make bechamel from scratch no way ma'am so this is not an authentic recipe for lasagna by no means this is, i would say this is like the dutch version of lasagna uh some milk for the lasagna oops mushrooms cheese of course and then some ground beef so yeah i'm gonna get reading now and then we'll worry about dinner in a couple hours okay so it is a little bit 130 like 138 and i just finished moonflower this was the longest book on the tbr and i'm really hoping the wheel will choose a shorter book but i did enjoy it i'm gonna give it four stars this was so smutty like at one point almost every chapter had like a very long smutty scene like any kind of kink you can think of this book has uh primal play breath play spitting rope play sex in a graveyard which that scene was disturbingly hot <laughs> anyway yeah do i have any thoughts not really because this doesn't really have a plot like once they finally agree to be together it's just sex and trying to figure out a little bit how their future like what their future will look like um i still stand by my statement that i don't i think i don't know i felt like at the point where i was at there was not any character progression really like other than cora accepting that she was not selfish for wanting them both but other than that i don't feel like we got to know wilder any better than we did halfway through and i don't feel like we would gotten to know ezra better than we did halfway through but that's okay i mean that's not the point of this book the point of this book is to have a smutty good time during halloween i do have to say as far as a halloween recommendation this doesn't like this takes place around halloween and yes the first time they have sex it is halloween but you don't really see a lot of halloween yeah i guess the sex in the graveyard is pretty halloween-esque <laughs> but like there are some novellas where it's takes it takes place like for the whole time during halloween so i guess that is my update i don't really have any other concrete thoughts so let's spin the wheel and like i said i'm really hoping for a shorter one less than 100 pages what was that i don't know yeah, I believe there's another one in here that is over 100 pages and that is Reverse Harem. And I feel like if I get that one, I'm gonna spin again. Not that I don't want to read it, I just don't want to read it back to back. So let's do a screen recording again and spin. Ooh, I was hoping for Headless Horseman. But Jack is fine because that one is uh, like a 50 pages i'm pretty sure so i mean this cover is just iconic like look at it let me scoot over so you can you can really see this iconic cover okay so jack is a monster full of tricks with one very special treat in his pants let me see if i can find it jack layla i do know that she has written a lot of these monster novellas, so I have very high hopes for this one. Okay, so Susie's feeling lonely on Halloween. She performs a love spell, hoping to summon a nice, perfectly safe Mr. Hunky to keep her entertained, but she fails. The creature that answers her summons is neither nice nor safe, but oh boy, is he hunky. 
Uh, Jack o' Lantern is a devious ancient monster who once tricked the devil himself into granting him immortality. Now Jack is here, a grinning pumpkin in the place of his head and a thing out of his world in this, in his very bulging pants. Okay, all right. Oh my God. Apparently his cum is pumpkin spice flavored. I mean, this is just unhinged, unhinged behavior. I'm gonna buy it right now. It's four euros, which is pretty expensive for like only 50 pages, but I don't care. This is peak, peak entertainment right here. So um, I guess I'll update you once I finish it because it's only 50 pages. Okay, so I'm currently reading Jack and yes, he did in fact taste like pumpkin spice syrup. And also his dick sounds terrifying. Like keep that thing away from me at all costs. And literally this lady, <laughs> so she's lonely on Halloween and she's like, what can I do? Yes, let me summon some guy to fuck me. Which, I mean, good for her. So yeah, he just showed up. He looks exactly like what the cover looks like. So sexy. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to continue. I am interested to see how he's gonna fit because i i think that is an anatomically impossible anyway moving on okay i figured let's do another location because you know since i'm just sitting on my couch the whole day that is not that interesting for you so i finished jack and this was i think Okay, sorry, my hair is annoying me. I think this was honestly the most unhinged one uh, out of everything I've read so far. At the end, I'm gonna do a tier ranking of like my favorites, but also the unhinged factor, <laughs> like the unhingedness of them all. This, you saw my, uh, the clip I did uh, describing his dick. There's a scene in here where he is fucking her, but then also, performing oral with his giant tongue at the same time like that's not attractive and the last scene made me gag gooped and gagged i tell you like what the fuck was that anyway this was hilarious i'm gonna give it four stars because it did what it was supposed to do like it had an assignment and it executed it perfectly so this was just hilarious like this was but it was also hot in some ways like if i ignore how painful this would be and how she would actually die in real life. It was hot and funny, which is what I want from these novellas. So yeah, I'm gonna give it four stars and I had the time of my life. Okay, so right now it is about four. I'm gonna cook now. And so I have about five hours left to read and I'm making the executive decision to remove the longest book uh, from my TBR, which is the hours for Halloween, I think, because I'm not gonna get to it. And like the goal is to read as many of these unhinged novellas as I can. So that one is not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna leave it here for now. If I land on it, I'm just gonna remove it and spin again. So let's do another screen recording here and pick my next read that I will start um, once I finish cooking like the majority of because lasagna obviously you have to cook and then you have to put it in the oven so once I'm done cooking and when it's in the oven I'm gonna start my next read so let's spin my oh spinner reel is looking funny but anyway nothing we could do about that yes this is what I wanted yes riding the headless horseman girl I didn't know I could be this happy okay okay so why do I want to read this one first of all look at this cover I mean, is that not just one of the most amazing covers? First of all, I do think it's drawn very prettily. <laughs> and also, like, what the fuck? Okay, that is all I have to say. And this is also very short. Let me read the synopsis. Okay, Arletta Harrington doesn't believe in death. It's Halloween in Sleepy Hollow and Arletta is spending the night selling tarot readings to her favorite townsfolk. The people of Sleepy Hollow believe in many magical things, but the one Arletta firmly doesn't believe in is death, the deadly rider of the hollow, the headless horseman. All of that changes when she encounters him on her late night walk. He senses how powerful her magic is and knows he has to have her. He whisks her away to his realm and tells her of his plans to make her his forever. Though she may be resistant at first after a passionate night spent with the messenger of death, 
she isn't so sure being his sounds like the bad uh, like a bad idea after all okay um, okay so actually let's rewind go back to so she's a tarot reader um, the girl in Jack also is like a witch or tarot reader so that was fun and he's like a demon yeah so I'm very excited about this one this doesn't have a good average rating 3.46 yeah, most people give it three stars, but I mean, this just sounds amazing in my head. So, I am gonna cook. I'm gonna show you, I guess. I, I don't think I can actually show you me cooking, because that sounds like too much of an effort. And also not the point of this vlog, but I will show you my the result of my beautiful lasagna. <laughs> and yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, so after this one, there are still offerings, Burn for Jack and Pumpkin. Oh, Seduced by the Pumpkin Spice Latte is what I'm very interested in. What are these books? Like, I just commend these people for being hilarious. That's all I have to say. Okay, so yeah, I guess after this one, the one I'm most excited about is Seduced by the Pumpkin Spice Latte. So I, I think I'm going to make sure I'm going to read that one. We'll see. I think I'm going to read that one regardless because it's only 11 pages. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna do that. Look at her, she's beauty, she's grace. Obviously this is a lot of food, but I cannot eat all that in one night. So this is gonna be a amazing leftovers, which is good because I don't really wanna cook anymore this week. So yes, this needs to cool a bit and then I can dig in. Okay, so I actually finished two books and, you know, before I started this reading vlog, I was four books behind schedule on my Goodreads goal. Now I'm one book ahead of schedule, so thank you to these unhinged novellas. So I finished writing The Headless Horseman and this was great. Like four stars again. I just thought it was entertaining. It was pretty well written. And this is another guy who has a pumpkin for a head. And you know what? I find it so interesting. The Most of the books I read for this vlog, well, at least Scream for the Scarecrow, even though he did not have a pumpkin for a head, but also writing The Headless Horseman and Jack. I find it so fascinating that these girls, after one night of hot, amazing sex, are just willing to go to like a different realm to live happily ever after with these men. Like these girls must be so sick and tired of the dating world and human men, because I gotta tell you, I'm a part of me relates to them. You know, if I have to spend another year on these dating apps, <laughs> I might also wish for a guy with a pumpkin head to whisk me away and have his way with me. I am this close, I tell you. I tried dating apps oh, for a God. little while. That, first of all, they, they just need to put all the apps on one app and call it What's Left. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this was fun. Not much else to say. In fact, okay, so right now it is 7.30. A part of me is kind of sick and tired of these stories. I'm not gonna lie, because one of them is a little bit different from the others. Let me see. Offerings, I think. Let me see how long that is. Okay, so 96 pages. I don't know, we'll see. Because <laughs> I've already read five books for this vlog. Okay, but anyway, I also read Seduced by the Pumpkin Spice Latte because what is an unhinged Halloween vlog? without reading this book. Like in that case, I did not do a good job. So I actually vlogged myself while reading it and I'll give you the highlights after I film this clip. And I also tell you my star rating for the pumpkin spiced, or uh, seduced by the pumpkin spice latte. So cue to that. Yeah, sorry. Why do I relate to this girl? Pumpkin spice lattes were just about her favorite thing in the world. Right after Taylor Swift, brunch and braid she learned about on Pinterest. Except for the last part, I might be her. Maybe I'll also get seduced by a pumpkin spice latte. That would surely spice up my life. No pun intended. Melissa jumped out of bed and walked over to her closet. She needed to look good for her first PSL. Pumpkin spice latte. Okay, so she just drank the pumpkin spice latte. She felt a throb in her body that was undeniable. 
Was she into this pumpkin spice latte? Like, sexually? I keep saying latte differently. Anyway. She pushed the notion out of her mind. That was silly. You couldn't have sex with a Starbucks drink. Or could you? <laughs> uh, this girl is upstairs in a Starbucks. Fondling herself while drinking her coffee. Oh my god. Okay, I cannot even read this out loud. <laughs> uh, okay, so now the coffee cup is moving all around her body and it reached her the waistband of her yoga pants. How, how does that even work? I'm so intrigued. Was she really going to do this? Was she going to have sex with a pumpkin spice latte in Starbucks? Are you really going to do this, girl? Really? You know, I'm reading this. Okay, so now she's having a threesome with the Starbucks employees. And they are constantly pouring the pumpkin spice latte on her body. And all I keep thinking is, what a sticky mess this is going to be. You're going to need a long hot shower after. <laughs> there are a certain few people who we call pumpkin spice sexuals. What is this? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to give it two stars. Because this was funny. Okay, it was. It was not that terrible. Okay? It was hilarious. You know, and to each their own. Yeah, you know what? I just decided. It's 7.30. So almost 24 hours. But I'm kind of done with these unhinged novellas. I read five of them. I think that's enough for now. <laughs> I would honestly recommend all of them, even the pumpkins uh, seduced by the pumpkin spice latte. I mean, that is just an experience on its own. And it's just like funny. Like most of them I just found funny. So if you're in a bad mood, these might cheer you up because they surely cheered me up and I definitely needed that. And most of them were really hot. I'm not going to lie. So yeah. I'm actually uh, going to film the intro for this vlog plus the outro on a different day. And that's where I also will do like the level of unhingedness. And I'll also give you like my tier ranking. So see you then. All right, I'm back. And I'm going to do basically the tier ranking of the books I read. So I ended up reading five novellas, as you could see by the vlog. And basically, because I gave one book two stars and all the other ones four stars, I do want to tier rank them of like my favorite and then my second favorite, third favorite, stuff like that. But as I mentioned a couple times in this vlog, I also want to give you the level of unhinged behavior. So basically how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use these ghosts. And the reason I'm using them is because they are unhinged. Look at them. They are all holding a pumpkin head, which if you have watched the rest of this vlog that you know why that is unhinged behavior and they're also drinking what i'm sure is a pumpkin spice latte and especially the third ghost look at him it looks like or her it looks like it's willing to be taken by a pumpkin headed monster <laughs> like ready and willing so they are just so cute i love them so i'm gonna use them basically one ghost means it's a mild level of unhinged behavior then two ghosts is like a medium level of unhinged behavior. And then three ghosts is like an extreme level of unhinged behavior. So let's get started. So my least favorite book I read in this vlog is Seduced by the Pumpkin Spice Latte. This was just, it was only 11 pages. It's not really a good story, obviously, but it was entertaining. Like I, like I already said, I would still recommend it, but especially compared to the other ones, at least the other ones were trying. This was just like one scene, basically two scenes of the girl getting ready to get her pumpkin spice latte and then getting it and then fucking the pumpkin spice latte and then having a threesome. So it was just like, objectively not a good like good story but however the level of unhinged is three like i cannot give this anything but three ghosts worth of unhinged behavior like everything about this was unhinged from the very first page to the last one so yeah if you're looking for unhinged behavior in your Halloween novellas, then look no further than to do spent pumpkin spice latte moving on in number four is Riding the Headless Horseman, which a part of me is sad about that because this was the one I was most excited about, as you could see. But at the end of the day, now a couple days later, I barely remember anything about this book. It kind of falls flat. I still stick by my four star rating, but it could have easily 
gotten a three star, honestly. Maybe if I had read this one first, I would feel different, but since I had already read a similar type of story, it's the least favorite of the four stars. And as far as unhinged level is concerned, I gave it two ghosts. Because yes, obviously there's unhinged behavior going on, but aside from him not having a head, <laughs> it's not really that different from any other like monster novella or like, like a novel with any other supernatural being. Like I've read plenty of those. Like it's not really like the, f so he's like a ghost basically, or like, I don't know what he is, but that's not really that different from like a vampire or a werewolf or any other like supernatural creature. So therefore it is still unhinged obviously because he has a pumpkin for a head and she's like willing after meeting him for one day to like forsake her life and go with him to like his underworld. So that is basically where the level of unhingedness comes from. In third place is Scream for the Scarecrow. This one is not really a romance. It doesn't have an HEA. At least I, I don't think how in any universe this could qualify as an HEA, but it was enjoyable. It did give me all the spooky Halloween vibes. As far as unhinged behavior, it is three levels of unhinged behavior, mainly because this, the main character is so stupid. Like she's just unhinged. <laughs> like the, all the decisions she's made is just unhinged hinged behavior. Also, like I said, the way it ends, like what kind of life is that? Like what? I don't know. Like I, I refuse to believe the scarecrow <laughs> was like the best sex she's ever had, that she's willing to completely alter her entire life for him. So that's basically where the unhinged behavior comes from. And number two is Moonflower. So Moonflower, I felt like out of all of them was the most solid story, which makes sense since it's the longest one. And yeah, I don't think it's that different from a lot of like poly romances. So level of unhinged, I would just give it one, honestly. I got the cutest one, the third one, because the only really unhinged thing that happened was the sex in the graveyard like that. Everything about that scene was unhinged behavior, but that was just one scene. The rest of the book was not that unhinged, like not at all. Actually, it's just a girl fighting her HEA with two guys. So yeah, and my favorite was Jack. This was everything that I was looking for in this vlog. It was funny, it was hot, and it was unhinged. So therefore it gets three ghosts of unhinged behavior. Like everything that happened in here was unhinged. Like the fact that she was lonely and she decided to just summon a random guy to fuck her was unhinged behavior. Then him showing up with his pumpkin head was unhinged behavior. The type of sex they had was unhinged behavior. And the ending, like especially the last scene, that like I should give it four, four ghosts for unhinged behaviors just for that last scene alone. Like I would say read this book just to get to that last scene. Like. I still, like, I kind of want to throw up a little bit thinking about that last scene. That's how, un how unhinged it was. So yeah, as you could see, I had a very fun time reading all these novellas. And yeah, I would recommend all of them. But if you're just going to read one, I would say read Jack. Because that gives you basically everything the other ones also give you. And Moonflower, I would recommend just if you want, like, a good smutty novella then I would say read that one. Yeah, definitely let me know in the comments below um, if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. Also, if you have any good unhinged Halloween novellas, leave those in the comments. And I would also really love to know if you have any recommendations for unhinged Christmas novellas because I might do a similar vlog in December if I have the time. I would really love that. When I'm uploading, it's like a couple days before Halloween. I'm not really planning on celebrating Halloween, but for those of you who are, what are you planning on going as? I would really love to know that. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know by leaving a like if you did. And if you're down there, leave me a ghost emoji. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.